Okay, everybody, uh, it's been quite some time since I've done a Blender tutorial. Uh, I've been working on my apps and things like that, but uh, I've decided that I could get back into it now. And what I wanted to show you was uh, a issue with Blender that I finally uh, kind of overcame uh, after some trial and error. And you'll see here that I've modeled this kind of wild mushroom here. Now, uh, the screen grab software in combination with the high density of all the sculpting that I'm going to do in these tutorials may make the frame rate very, very poor. Uh, the program may crash at some point. It's just because of, you know, doing all this high-end processing on a very old Mac here, but uh, bear with me. Anyway, um, I modeled this mushroom, and then I went and added the multi-res modifier, and then I started doing some sculpting to add all these, like, veins and crevices and kind of pock marks. And I ended up with this really kind of grotesque looking wild mushroom here. Uh, but the problem is, when you add the multi-res modifier and do the sculpting, which is awesome in Blender, the sculpting tools are really fantastic. Uh, the thing is that you end up with this very, very extremely dense mesh. And if I hit Z, hopefully it won't... Okay, there we go. There is the wireframe mode. So as you can see, what you would normally be able to kind of like see through... It's so dense with polygons, it's just, it's just incredible. So, uh, what you need to do is, you need to find a way to bake the displacement information onto the original, uh, onto the original kind of low polygon version of the model, all right? Actually, let me go ahead and, it looks like Blender's already starting to throw fits here because of the fact that Okay, like I, like I was stating earlier, oh, there we go. So there's the original model. So as you can see, the original model is extremely low polygon. All right, so it's all that um, sculpting stuff that is driving me crazy. Basically, what you'll do is you'll take the sculpting information and you'll bake it onto this model as a displacement. Let me put this back into object mode. Sculpting mode itself takes up a lot of space or a lot of processing. Uh, you'll bake it as a displacement map and a normal map, and then you'll put it back onto the object itself. So, uh, let's go ahead and, and do this kind of from the beginning. This is gonna be a rather long tutorial. Uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna just break it up into pieces. This is kind of the introduction to it. So, let's go ahead and create a new file. All right, and let me start my uh, screencast keys here so you'll see what kind of keys I'm using as I uh, model and do different things alright so let's go ahead and model the mushroom okay uh, let's go to mesh and we're going to create a cylinder alright alright and then before I start messing around with the cylinder uh, let's go ahead and I'll just move well 30 vertices I guess is fine okay I'll tab into edit mode and now I'll just start squashing this thing out here. All right, and then I will go ahead and select faces, select this top face, scale a little bit, extrude it, scale it, extrude it, scale it. So I'm making the crown of the mushroom at this point. Okay. Then I will delete that face. And then I'll go into vertex mode. All right, I'll select all those and I will hit, all right. And we're gonna collapse all these points that we selected into the center. All right. So now we have kind of a crown of the mushroom. We'll go back to faces, all right. Extrude that one out. All right. Uh, I'm not going to do too much. Um, if I was doing something for an actual uh, film or something like that, I would, of course, be very, very cautious of where I put the uh, stuff. But we're doing this more as a uh, just a demonstration here. So now we'll make the uh, kind of stalk of the mushroom here. And I'm going to delete the bottom of it. 
because you're not going to see that. All right. And let me go to orthographic view there so I can get a good look at it. And I'll go to Z so I can see what I'm doing here. And I will scale this out a bit. Let's go in. All right. We're not trying to do anything really fancy here. Let me go in and select some of these and move them up. Because the mushroom kind of, kind of bows in the middle there. Now in the other mushroom, I kind of put these veins in there and stuff. I kind of just went in and actually, let's tab out of this temporarily. And let's go in here and add subdivision surface modifier just so we can see what, you know, what it's going to look like in the end. And over here on our object tools, we'll hit uh, smooth shading. All right. So now we have a better idea of what the final model shape is going to be like. So I'm just going to select some of these polys here. So I'm going to make the kind of like, uh, you know, on, on a um, portobello mushroom, for example, there's these kind of like veins down at the bottom. And that is what I'm attempting to duplicate here. And I'm kind of selecting them kind of a little bit randomly. You'll see they're not exactly equal distance. And then I'll just extrude those down. Okay. All right, so now we have kind of a very simple mushroom shape. All right. Okay, and then I'm just going to save this out. And I'll call this mushroom. All right, the first part of our tutorial is almost done here. So let me just go ahead and oops, let's drag out a new window. Hide the tool and go to UV Image Editor. Select our, our object. Tab into edit mode and select everything and hit U and do a UV Smart Project, accept the defaults because I'm lazy, and then let's go ahead and hit uh, Shift and Spacebar together to maximize the window. And then we'll go down to our UVs and we will pack the islands. All right. Maybe let's, let's try averaging the island scale here. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, so basically we try to get as much, you know, info, you know, as much room inside of our UV map as possible. Again, you know, for the purposes of, of this tutorial, I have to kind of get going here, but let me just move this up just a bit because some of the uh, vertices of the UV map seem to be barely hanging off the edge of the map there. Later on, it will be apparent why I need to make sure that there's a little bit of a, you know, space around here for everything. I'll move everything up. All right, so that's our UV map. So now we, because we're going to need that UV map later when we uh, apply the bake onto it and stuff like that. All right, so it's also just a good habit. Anything time you bring uh, any kind of models into a game environment or something like that, they'll have to be UV map so that they'll know where to put the textures onto. Tap back into that, and we'll save over that file. All right, so that's the first part. We've just done some very rudimentary uh, uh, modeling. All right, so the next part, we're going to add a, a what we call matte cap material, and then we'll start sculpting.